Howdy, welcome to Mogs and Dogs. Today we are gonna talk about my new camera and that is the Red Tiger T27. I had filmed some video that showed me with the box and opening it up and all that business, but it is gone. Don't know what happened to it. So you were stuck with this. Basically the T27 is a two camera system, one front, one rear. It records, it's a DVR and it has a screen that looks like a rearview mirror. I love it. I thought it was fantastic. That's the end of the video. If you want to see more about how I installed it, keep watching, but the basic gist of it is it's pretty good as far as I can tell. So here you go. So this is our Red Tiger rear view camera, I guess. Rear view mirror, I'm just gonna call it a mirror because that's exactly how it will act. Now these come with these plastic straps that you're supposed to put over the top and strap this to your factory rear view mirror. My truck does not have a rear view mirror. I don't think it ever did. So we don't have that to start with. And even if it did, I wouldn't want to do that. That's pretty uh, janky to me. Just this rubber banded thing onto a mirror, a mirror over a mirror, if you will. So we're not gonna do that. This is the forward camera, so that can't be obstructed. This actually slides out, which is interesting. So if your mirror was too big for this to fit around it, you could have put that there. Um, what I'm gonna do is I ordered this piece and we are gonna mount this here like so and then we are going to mount this to the back of there and that is just a ram mount a standard one inch ball ram mount this we got from Amazon I'm not sure who makes it somewhere in China it gets made so that'll go there we put the ram mount on and then we have the ram arm and then we got another one inch mounting ball and this will actually attach to the roof of the truck. Now this plate here actually comes with its own mount which is made for the windshield mount that you get on a normal car. I decided that I would rather have the ram mount because this is more adjustable and it's got we can tighten it down which will make it more sturdy and it's just kind of more uh, universal so if I need to take this off for some reason and put it somewhere else it'll be much easier to do than worrying about something attached to my windshield. I haven't had the best of luck with these anyway they seem to fall off eventually so not a big fan of this so this is what we're going with. All right we are going to go over how I have decided to mount the camera on the Unimog. Now when you buy this it comes with these tabs installed at all four corners. I've already taken these two off and you just use this rubber strap here pull it over to this one and it wraps around your current rear view mirror because most cars have a rear view mirror on them. Mine does not. So I could have just bought a regular car rear view mirror glue that to the windshield and done it this way. I decided I did not want to do that. I instead wanted to hard mount it to my header. So that is what I am going to do. Now the company Red Tiger here, they do not actually make anything to mount this in any other way than with these straps. So I had to get a little creative. Here's how you take these off. There's just a little rubber foot that you have to scrape off. It's just glued on. And then there's this tiny, tiny, I mean it is minuscule screw that goes in here. These little plastic blocks come out and those have a little recessed square that fits inside of these things. 
which hold them in place. So the screw doesn't need to do a whole lot with this, this setup. So we're going to pull those out. Those are gone. I am going to put these blocks back in. I don't know that you would actually need to necessarily. And then because this screw is so tiny and it recesses in that hole, they're not going to work for our purposes. Now that brings us to this piece. You can buy these plates on Amazon for the various different companies that make these cameras. Unfortunately, I could not find one that fit this precisely with the, the holes. This claims, I believe, that it is universal, but it is most definitely not. The hole pattern from top to bottom is correct with these, but side to side, it was not. This is supposed to be 140 millimeters from hole to hole. There are all kinds of different sizes on Amazon, but none of them are 140 millimeters, as far as I could see. I am not the best at searching for things these days, so maybe there is one that fits better. So what I ended up doing was leaving these two holes and just drilling two new holes that are a little further out at 140 millimeters. I also had to increase the size of these slightly because the screw size I am using is significantly bigger than the screws that come with it. So I decided to go with a number four screw at a half inch. And those are just going to screw in here like so and tighten down and that mounts that. to that camera. Next, we need some, I need a ball on the back of this because I'm going to use the RAM system. Now I had this, so that's why I went with the two prong one. You could do a four piece one, a four hole one if you wanted. I had to drill new holes for this anyway, so it wouldn't be that hard to do another two holes. I didn't feel like it needed four screws, two should be good, so I just drilled the holes and tapped them and I'm just using these little screws, stainless screws to do that. So those will go there and from there then we just have normal RAM mount hardware and then this will go on the header itself. And then we will be able to lock this thing down really well. Move it, re remove it easily. So it's just the normal RAM mount system, which I'm a pretty big fan of. And I have a lot of parts already, so why not use the same on everything? So let's put that together. All right, that's all together now. These screws actually, one important thing I forgot to mention, as far as I can tell, the most important thing about them is they need to be coarse threaded screws. So like a sheet metal screw or a wood screw. I tried some fine thread screws like machine screws and they would not take inside the little plastic housing that uh, is threaded for them. These actually tighten down really well, but be warned. I don't know if these will touch any of the electronics on the inside. We'll see. So use at your own risk. Do not trust what I say. And if you strip them out, I don't know if you can go back to the original screws or not. Probably not. These are pretty small. So once you've used a bigger screw, I'm sure there's no going back. So take that into uh, account if you are going to follow me down this journey but that's what we've got so far let's go mount it to the truck all right now we are test fitting the mirror boom there it is so like I said we're just gonna drill four holes mount this here right behind the light light will go here 
uh, this is a perfect spot that works well just gonna drill a hole behind here for the wires to come through that need to attach to the front or the top of the mirror so this is just a test fit I have one bolt in there at the moment just pull it down and mount everything else up okay there are three cables that go into our camera one of these is a GPS responder which I just have going up and down we're gonna go along this a pillar here and this is going to be mounted on the dash once I have the dash back in. We want it to go up towards the sky, nice and flat, so that's where that's going to go. I might mount it to the A pillar, but I think it would still be better if it were flat like this. So that's where that's going to go. The other one, this one here, this is our cable that goes to the rear camera. So again, that just goes up, across, down here, and then it's gonna go down through my firewall and then under the truck, which I will show in a minute. And then there's this one. This is the hardwire kit, so we can hardwire this into the truck. It has three wires, very simple. It, they come with fuse taps on the end of them. You're supposed to plug it into your fuse box. This is what my fuse box looks like. <laughs> it is not a uh, current fuse box. So that wasn't gonna happen. I probably wouldn't wanna do that anyway. So there are three cables. One of them, which I will show you here, is a ground. So we're just gonna hook that up to the stud for the LED light that's on the roof because that stud is used to ground that LED light so it can also ground my camera. The other one is this little red cable here and that is the ACC or the accessory cable which goes into uh, it splices in. I use this uh, Wago connector to connect it to a wire that goes on or off with the key. So when the key is on, this gets power. When the key is off, this does not have power. And then the third cable I just spliced into here. I had to expand this to a larger Wago, but it's this yellow one and it is power that is always on. So it's connected directly to the battery. I think it's called BATT or uh, Battery Plus or something like that. Anyway, that power is always on. So that's it. That's the three cables. It's very simple. And I just plug them into these Wago connectors and we're done. So these three cables coming down from here these are for my overhead light these go to my camera so i can just unplug those easily and then pull my whole header down so i will put the header back on and we will be done with this part of the install all right let's talk rear camera first thing we had to do was run the camera line to the back of the truck. I just ran it with all the other cables. You can see it comes around and we ended up here. That's it. I just sleeved it with this plastic stuff. And then I'll show you in a minute how that camera plugs in there. Next, I decided to remove the hitch because I am not going to be using the hitch as far as I know. I think it's a European style hitch anyway, so I don't even think anything here in the States would fit on that. It's definitely not a ball hitch, which is the most common thing. So I have no use for that. I'm going to pull it off, or I did pull it off. This, if you're ever uh, wanting to take one of these off, just so you know, you unbolt these four bolts 
right? And those obviously mount around there. I thought that would do it and it would just slide off. That is not the case. You actually still have to take out this cotter pin and then hammer this big pin out and then you can take this front piece off and then this slides out. So, you know, for all you people that have these and want to remove them, that's what you do. So, since then I just kind of sanded this down, repainted it, and we are going to mount the camera right there. Alright, so let's talk about the mount real quick. I had this boxy type thing came in the back of the truck for some reason so I just decided to use it give my camera just a little bit of protection the camera on this T27 is actually pretty robust it seems it's really heavy seems like really thick steel the mount for it though is pretty darn weak it's these two tiny little screws here on a pivot and then there's a bottom plate and a top plate top plate attaches to the camera the bottom plate is supposed to attach to wherever you put it and they send you this little 3m sticker uh, so you can stick it down to whatever you're gonna mount it to uh, I thought about doing that up here but I don't know just a sticker on the back of this thing I don't think so so I decided to bolt it down to this box and then this box is then bolted to the bumper so it's got some uh, protection you know around it it's not waterproof or anything but the camera itself should be and then just ran the uh, cable behind it and this is the plug here it's just a very simple little plug it's got a little notch in it so you can only put it together one way put that together and you are done so I'll plug that in, tidy it up in the back, zip tie it down, and we should be good. So the rear camera cable obviously starts here, where all of them do, runs up through here, runs across. I have it sheathed in this protective stuff, runs down. This is where the GPS ended up. Now I'm going to have to get a cover for this. Um, just a piece of probably angle something or other that goes in and then covers this up and kind of holds everything back. The reason I ended up running it down the front here of this pillar instead of inside the pillar like some of the uh, wires is just because of ease of getting it through there. It is a real pain getting wires through here and there is no way I'm going to be able to get this or the other end of that plug through this A-pillar. So anything with an end on it would definitely be impossible to get through here. Well, for me. And uh, it just seemed a lot easier just to run it through here. And then I have easier access to it. I can actually get to the wires instead of everything being inside of that pillar. So I think I'm just gonna continue to run everything down the fronts of these. And then from there, It runs down, across, and through the firewall, which we'll pick up on the other side. So it runs out of the firewall here, around. Everything loops down there, and then down along the frame to the back of the truck. You can see it picks up all the, the wires run along the frame of the truck. down to the back. If you're new to Unimogs or don't know, everything that ends up on the frame of the truck from the cab really should be run through the front here to this pivot point because eventually we'll need to raise the cab so it's going to pivot here and the cab will be lifted up so if you had any wires going directly down from the cab to the, the chassis, you would have problems. You'd have to unhook those or it just wouldn't, wouldn't work. So if you run everything from the, the dash to the front, the cab can pivot without putting any kind of strain on, on uh, 
wires or airlines or anything else that might need to be run. So that is why you need the 33 foot camera cable for the dash cam or the rear view mirror cam. And on my truck, which is the longer wheelbase, it fits almost exactly the right length. It's not tight, so it's still loose, that's great. So if you wanted to run it somewhere else or had an even longer truck, you might need to get a longer cable which they didn't sell online, but maybe they, if you contacted them, they would sell that to you. But the 33 for me worked perfectly. So using the Thread Tiger T27 rear view mirror or camera, whatever you want to call it. First of all, turn the power on. Camera goes on. It automatically starts recording front and back. There's a number of settings here. You can go into settings. I'm not gonna get into all this. You can look this up. But you can swipe sideways and switch the camera. So that's now the front camera. Now it's split, rear, front, split, fr uh, rear, front, switches sides or just the rear, which is how I always run it. I believe you can hold this, oh there it is, and move it up and down, which is handy. So you're not actually moving the camera. I think just because of this really thin profile, the camera obviously records a much thicker profile, so you're just digitally moving there you go. Tap it and scroll up or down. You can't go side to side because there's no extra space there. So that's kind of handy. And then I believe this button here in the middle, that's the one you would hit if you wanted to save something. All right, other features are it's really hard to tell, but there is a compass here. It tells you what direction. Right now we're north, and then miles per hour. And I think you can set that to kilometers per hour. But this was really actually important to me. I really wanted this feature to be fantastic because I have kilometers per hour on my Speedo, if you will. So I don't really know miles per hour, so this would have been a, a great uh, speedometer for me. But it's the, the text is just too small and too hard to read in most situations. It depends on the background, like some backgrounds are darker and it does show up well and you can use it, but a lot of the time it's, it's unreadable because it's too small. If uh, I were to talk to Red Tiger and ask for one uh, change in this camera, I would say it would be that. Like put some kind of box around it with a solid background or something so that I can see that all the time no matter what the background is behind it. That would be excellent. Over here you have the time and date. Uh, it's handy but not very important and you do run into the same issue. It kind of disappears into a lot of backgrounds. So, very handy features. Uh, that'd be cool if they upgraded that at some time in the future with the software so I could just do a firmware update and that was better. All right, final thoughts on the Red Tiger T27. I think it's a great deal. For $200 roughly, uh, it's fantastic. You get the front facing camera, which is 4K, the rear facing, which is 2.5K, um, it was easy to install. I don't know about power draw, but I'm not really concerned too much about that. It's easy to use. The interface is great. Like I said, the only thing I would upgrade if I could would be the speedometer. If I could see that better, make it more clear on any background. And I think the only way to do that would be to put a solid background behind it. 
a solid color, maybe a box, which would obscure your view a little bit, but I think it would be worth it. And maybe that's, I think that's a feature you can turn off. So if you didn't want that obscured and you're, you had a speedometer on your, your vehicle that worked for your country, <laughs> then you could just turn it off. Other than that, um, the 33 foot cable was a huge benefit. Love that. It was perfect. Setup was easy. Yeah, I can't say uh, more good things about it. It worked every time we turned the truck on and it's a very clear picture. I'll put up some uh, samples of video right now that I have so you can see the quality. I can't compare it to others because I have not used others. So anyway, thank you Red Tiger. I think it was a great deal. Uh, one other thing that I could cover is why I chose this one over others. At first I was thinking, oh, maybe I should get uh, all in one like all my camera solutions on one screen so I was looking at like the Furion and the other company that competes with them I forget what they're called I mean there's a million of the Chinese brands on Amazon that compete with them but I think the two big in the RV world are Furion and I forget what the other one is but and you can do more cameras with those. So you could do like four cameras or maybe even six cameras. And they had like wireless cameras, um, much more expensive. And one thing that I didn't want after looking at those for a while was to have a giant screen on my dash that had a whole bunch of camera views on it that would be confusing when I want to look at something in the rear view. So I think this one is perfect. I can just have the, the rear view mirror up there and that's all I see when I look back there, just like in a normal car. And it's completely straightforward and lightning quick. So that's why I went with this. It also has the benefit of recording front and back. So it becomes a um, dash cam, which is, so it's doing two things now, but it's the dash cam functionality doesn't, get in the way of my rear view mirror. So that's great. I think in the future, when we put the box in the back and get that going and, and everything, I'll probably do a se separate security system, camera system, that'll go around the entire truck and it'll be there, probably have a screen in the back of the truck that shows me all, you know, what's going on around the truck at all times. And I can get a little more fancy with that because I won't have to look at that while I'm driving. So, but for driving, and cost and setup and everything I think this thing is fantastic as far as I can tell we'll see how it works in the long run so thanks for watching